Okay, so why paranormal investigations for you? I'm searching out for the answers. I've been investigating and searching out for answers for over 30 years. It all started um, when I was 16 years old. After my father passed away, my sister and I, I have a twin sister, and we were babysitting my nieces at the house. We all lived together at one time. And my sister and I were sitting there, and then all of a sudden, the drapes flew up in the air over the sliding glass door, and there wasn't a breeze out. And that, that's when it all started. So then we started uh, going to haunted locations, uh, about 30 years ago, we started every vacation we would go to a haunted location. It always had to be a haunted hotel. And then we went, one year we went up to Yosemite. And we scouted around, we walked in the cemetery, and when we came back, things started happening in both of our houses. Our jewelry started disappearing, our shoes would get turned over, facing each other and you would find them behind a door. So we started wondering, you know, hey, what's, what's going on around here? So we've been searching out for years and I'm hoping to find the answer, but I really don't think we ever will. I don't think that we are meant to find out the answers. Tell me about the group. I started Paranormal Zone TV two years Everywhere ago. Cool. Look at my mom there. Oh, I started Paranormal Zone two years ago. And we are a live streaming reality ghost hunt show. And we stream on the internet all our shows. And I have a fabulous team. Uh, I consider them experts in what they do. And uh, we plan to continue on for many more years to come. And tell me about you, your Brookdale. Your, your, how you, you saw it, why you came here, and what your, your feeling about it is. I've been coming here to the Brookdale for the last couple of years. And uh, actually, um, before I started my team, my other two sisters, we came here and stayed for a weekend. We were celebrating. And um, my sister uh, had her purse with her, and she had her wallet in her purse. And um, when we left that weekend, her wallet was gone. She reported it to the desk, and she even talked to the uh, ladies that cleaned the rooms. If you see anything, uh, and, and my wallet is missing, could you please make sure that you turn it into the desk? And uh, so when we got home, and she came into my house, her wallet was in my house. And that, and of course nobody believes us, but I am a witness to that. Because I saw her take out her wallet that weekend, pay for her room, and her wallet had disappeared, but it was in my house when we got home. So that is very, very strange. And then um, since we've been coming here and doing paranormal investigations, I most of the time are working on the camera uh, why my, the rest of my team is investigating, but I have had experiences in Sarah's room. It's where she used to sleep and play. The first time I was able to get in there after it had been cleaned out, I walked into the room and I had to go over to the back wall and I could hardly stand up. The room, I was spinning. I felt like the whole room was spinning and I had to hold on. And I told them, please, you've got to get me out of here. I've never experienced that before, never. And then um, we also brought on with us for the first time that, I don't know if it was that evening or another evening, we brought on a new investigator with us. And he had never done this before. And we had brought him here into this log cabin room. And uh, we were doing, um, Karen was doing her dowsing and we were doing EVP work. And then he came out of this room and he wanted to join us. As he was walking out of this room, he held his hands to his ears and he got to the floor 
And he goes, oh my God, oh my God. I said, what's wrong? He said, somebody is screaming in my ears. And then um, uh, actually another investigator heard the screams as well. And then we wanted him to calm down. So we had asked him to, him to please go outside and just calm down. So as he proceeded to go to the other side of the lodge and walk down the steps, he was pushed down the steps. And nobody was near him. So the only thing I can think of is that there is a spirit here that didn't like him and caused those problems for him. Uh, I also, there's what they call a honeymoon bridge in the uh, Brook Room. And I, one night when we were here, I happened to go over there by myself. And as I was standing on the Brook Room, I actually heard a little girl's voice. It was a little sweet, high-pitched voice. And she said something to me, but I couldn't make out what she was saying. So those are about just about those my those are my experiences. Oh, and then um, another occasion that we were here, we were walking around the brook room, another investigator and myself, and we actually heard music and talking in the brook room, like people were having dinner and music was playing. I heard that with my own ears, and so did the other investigator that was with me. And that's that's about all I have. Because I mostly do the camera, and uh, the team mostly does most of the investigations. Two more quick questions. I'm going to get a little hit back here. It's doing good, Lorraine. It's Karen. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing good. Yeah. You're doing great. You're doing great. So I wonder if. Uh, fascinated with the unknown. You, you want answers and uh, you try to get them. And even though we do our EVP work with our um, digital voice recorders, it's fascinating to hear your responses to the questions that you ask, but it still doesn't prove that it's paranormal. But to us, it's an exciting thing to happen. And uh, since the paranormal is not recognized by the scientific field, um, we can have all the EVPs in the world and get all the responses we want. It will still never be recognized. Not now, anyway. And uh, so we do it for ourselves. And, and that's what we're looking for, answers. And I don't think we'll ever get them. And, and you're looking forward to keep on keeping that relationship building with Sarah? I would like to communicate with her. She did. I believe that she did talk, try to talk to me one night. 
and I haven't really tried that get into that with her and uh, yes I would I, I would really like her to talk to me I'm jealous when she talks to Nancy <laughs> I'd like her to talk to me as well and then how would you describe like the great the, the Brook Room it's just go the Brook Room is absolutely amazing there is a lot of energy I feel that there's a lot of energy in the Brook Room and there's a lot of residual as well and that's what we heard that night residual hauntings just because of the uh, the music, the laughter, the clanging of dishes, they were actually having dinner, and it was residual, and we heard it, and that's amazing. That's some of those experiences that we have are absolutely amazing, and I believe that some people would just love to have the experiences that we have, and I believe the more that you deal with the paranormal, the more experiences that you do have, and you have to believe. If you don't believe, nothing's going to happen. So being a believer, I believe, I truly believe that's why we get the experiences that we do. And then for people that have never seen it, tell them about the, uh, the brook, why it's called the brook. Um, you know, because of the water running through? Yeah, you know, that, that brook room, there's a history on that, but Nancy knows the history more than I do. There was a flood here years and years ago, and the brook actually changed location. And the brook room as it is now was a lot heavier. It was really heavy. And it's calmed down quite a bit. I think they've kind of dammed it up. But that is, the restaurant was built around that brook room. And years ago, if you get on the website, you can find old pictures of that brook room. They had redwoods uh, growing right in the uh, restaurant. And they've had a couple of fires and they've rebuilt. So. They, because of the fires, they lost the redwoods, and that's why the uh, Brooklyn looks the way it does today. But it's very, um, and with water running through, you know, that brings a lot of paranormal energy as well. But it's a beautiful room, and uh, there is a lot, a lot of residual hauntings in that room. Perfect. Anything I didn't ask you about the group or about what you guys do that you wanted to touch upon? Paranormal Zone TV is one of the best, I feel is one of the best uh, investigating teams out there. Very professional. They know what they're doing and, uh, and we're a great team and we love what we do. We live stream. It's very exciting and we have a good time. We enjoy what we do. Excellent.